welcome to me answering questions that people have sent in. Lizzie Louie asks, how much of your shots is done in camera v post? Uh, honestly, it's a, it's a collaboration between uh, my studio manager and I and the artistic and uh, creative process. There's always going to be kind of uh, a director from the beginning that I kind of play that role. And I do kind of the, in many ways, data capture on site and bring that data back to the studio and then my studio manager Tim goes through it and starts to do the process that he does. He's highly capable in, in Photoshop and Lightroom and all the programs that he needs to be to do that and has an artistic eye to be able to bring those together and through us working together we've learned how to achieve what I initially set out and set out as a vision for what I wanted my photography to look like but got to a point of realizing I didn't have the time to uh, do every single image that I shot the justice that it needed for what I wanted to charge. And so I knew at that point I needed to hire someone to do that. And so I'd say it, it's very much a joint effort. And uh, I, I would say that if I were doing all the posts myself, I would, I would probably shoot less and deliver less to clients. So there's definitely an added value there. Um, but as far as, uh, how much is done on one or the other. It, it's, it's in many ways a very even split uh, as far as time goes. I don't know, maybe we'll have to get Tim in front of the camera sometime to answer that one too. When you were starting out, how did you learn the technical stuff? I failed. <laughs> uh, lighting, lenses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, honestly, um, when I started out, I was working as an architect and then quit doing that and thought, well, I'll buy and flip foreclosures and did one of those and took the money I made and bought everything I'd need to be a commercial photographer. And I couldn't figure out how to put a lens on for the first time. But I think we had our first cover of a magazine within three months of that. So the technical hurdle especially now with YouTube and everything else, is just not that high. The power behind your photography is going to be the emotions that you can convey through it. There's, I, I bought a bunch of books at the time and just read a bunch of stuff. Uh, I had a friend that was a commercial photographer out in California, and I went and spent some time with him. His name is Chet Williams. You can see him on Instagram. I think it's just at chetwilliams.com. He does incredible uh, healthcare work and he influenced a lot of what I do and how I do it. Um, I learned a lot from Irvin Serrano. He's a f local photographer here in Maine who's incredibly good as well. It was a lot of reading, a lot of interacting with people that knew what they were doing on the technical level as well. And then a lot of uh, putting my, you know, all of my effort forward and failing a lot, but like really internalizing those failures to learn from them and, and not repeat them. How do you set up your gear for an ARC photo shoot? Uh, every, every setup is going to be different depending on the space. So, you know, if you're setting up for a, a living room shot where there's huge windows and there's a lot of light coming in those windows, uh, you're gonna set up your lighting and everything a little differently compared to you know, a half light basement or something. So uh, it, it's really hard to answer that without walking you through a setting. But in general, we don't use many lights. I don't generally approach my images as lighting a lot of individual things. I prefer a more natural light, softer look. So we use less lights, honestly, and we'll bracket and then we'll do a bracket layer with strobe. In general, we'll have lights doing that, bouncing off of really large uh, light modifiers generally, and we'll work from an iPad Pro that's wireless and communicating with the camera. And so we work through live view, doing the styling, finding the composition, and then blending everything through there. C underscore Scott 206 asks, is the drone shot or video overplayed? Uh, as much as the, you know, from ground camera angle is overplayed. I mean, it's just a camera in a different location uh, and there's going to be endless, limitless ways you can use it. Um, for what I do with architectural photography, I generally find that I, I really love the straight down 
plan view because it, it just kind of represents the uh, floor plan, roof plan from an architectural drawing that's very interesting. And you see a lot of them, but if you can experiment doing them at different times of the day or whatever else, uh, it'll, it'll keep it fresh. And I, I wouldn't worry as much about are things overplayed or not. I find what you like and do it, perfect it, and push yourself to move on here and there. But don't do something or not do something just because you think other people have done it too much. Next, Zachary JDB, shout out Madro alumni. What's the most important piece in staging a room for an architectural photo shoot? The most important piece, in my opinion, would be to minimize, minimize, minimize. Get rid of all the clutter in the room. If you can take it out and still have the same feel from the image, take it out. Um, it's really difficult if you go into like an office setting or a house where there's just tons of photos or tons of busy stuff around that you're trying to shoot it and then visually all those things distract. If you can just leave in the major pieces that communicate the exact thing you want but then have just very uh, limited pieces of styling that accentuate what's already there, that to me is one of the most uh, important pieces in staging a room. Carl Ramsdale asks, can you surf in Maine? Uh, and that question uh, is answered with an absolutely no. The waves are no good here. Go back to from wherever you came. <laughs> Just kidding. Vanette underscore Shaw one asks, what made you decide to do photography? Um, I was working as an architect and I did not enjoy sitting at a desk all day every day. And I had a friend that was a commercial photographer in California. I had decided that I was going to leave architecture because I just didn't want to sit at a desk that long all day, every day. And uh, he said, hey, you're, you'd have an in with architects. Why don't you develop what you've already been doing off and on with photography into being an architectural photographer? And that's kind of the impetus of what made me decide to make that transition. And then we have Brian Doe Herdy Photos, and he asks, do you rely on light or composition more to direct the viewer's eye? Good question. Uh, I rely on composition more. If I'm approaching a room, I approach it first and foremost by composition. And I generally, through that, try and find the place where the viewer wants to put themselves in the image, and then if we have just very natural indirect light filling the space, I find that it naturally is just a very nice lighting feel to it. But if we have a lot of light pouring in directly and it aims you away from where you want the person to place themselves, we then have to work in, around that. Um, and I can get more into that some other day. But in general, I rely more on composition than light to direct the viewer. But then a lot of, like if you're shooting exterior compositions, uh, I'll find the right composition, but then note like when the right time of day would be for allowing the sun to actually give the building shape. Because if you don't have the right light, uh, things with typically right angles can look very flat, even though they're right angles. That is it for questions today. There's one more question. In oh. Messages. Our producer for today has told us that we have one more question from Spitzer Photo. Um, I couldn't type the whole message in that thing, period. Something I've always admired is your ability to photograph an interior space with exterior light still looking natural. Mm, not blown out and not god awful HDR. I'm with you there. I know there's a fair amount of just waiting for the right light slash time of day involved, but that can't be your only magic. A large part of our magic of how to accomplish that is actually sitting behind the camera right now, and his name is Tim, and he does an amazing job in post-production for me. And whenever I'm approaching a, a place that I want to have naturally lit, I'll generally try and shoot it when the light will not be coming directly into the room. So you, or hitting any of the window elements so you don't have those extremely high uh, layers of contrast to deal with. I'll try and find as large of light sources or modifiers to bounce 
uh, light off of to naturally backfill shadows, but not over backfill the shadows. Because if you over light against the key source of light, you lose the texture and definition and things. So generally we'll try and find an indirect light that doesn't have too much color cast on it as far as like if you're facing another brick building and that thing's being hit with direct light, you'll get a lot of red coming into your space. Basically that, using again, just kind of some uh, natural fill if you can, or bouncing light off of large modifiers if you can, and shooting when the light is not coming in directly, and always 100% for at least one layer capture, turn every single light off that's of a different color temperature. Uh, you'll have a lot easier time cranking the exposure overexposed for the areas that were a lot darker and through bracketing you can kind of go darkest to medium to light and layer those and work through them and get a really nice look. That was a lot of questions, a lot of good questions. If you have any further questions or want further clarification, uh, send us a direct message, text message, email, phone call, whatever, snail mail, and we'll see what we can do about them. Thanks a lot. Later.